Well, the oil market lurched into an odd freefall, right, taking West Texas Intermediate into bear market territory down almost 22 percent. Remember, though, the XLE, the energy sector of the S&P, already down about 27 percent. I looked up some antonyms for a gusher, right? The best word I could find on the list was gurgle, but this seems like more than just a gurgle. I want to bring uh, the Bonson Group Managing Director, David Bonson. And David, you know, um, is, this about, is this about worries or fears of a global recession? What's, what's driving this? Yeah, did, did you ever think we'd be asking if uh, $98 <laughs> oil is recessionary? Yeah. Um, I think recessionary oil price is fifty dollars, not not a hundred. But but when you're talking about coming down from one hundred and twenty, it certainly seems like a big drop in percentage terms. But it has more to do, Charles, with the volatility that comes in when geopolitics are so heavily involved now. You you have various supply constraints in Europe with all of the different moving parts in Russia. But the point I think for people that are involved in the energy space is that the baseline has become something that is very, very high in the, into the 90s mm -hmm. and even probably back into the 100s soon enough. No, I thought it was interesting is we got news out of OPEC, right, uh, that demand next year, a little bit more than 30 million barrels a day, but supply is going to be 900,000 less that. So there's your old supply and de demand de dynamics. Yeah. And I'm surprised we didn't move higher on that news. Yeah, well, I think that there's um, various trades that are moving around today. There's a lot of volatility. It's very heavy in the options market. And so those technicals are tougher to look at. You kind of have to look at rolling averages. And by the way, when natural gas is going higher at the same time oil is going lower, that also indicates there's something else going on than just people believing recessionary pressures are moving it down. There's a supply-demand imbalance, and it favors higher energy prices unless you have a deep recession which isn't coming anytime soon. You know, you made your clients a fortune. I, I remember when you first started coming on this network saying you were picking up the master limited partnerships. Uh, and, you know, this one, they were dirt cheap. Your, your rationale for it was uh, thought out really nicely. Now we pull back. Uh, I mean, is this a good time to start buying? You talked about new baselines, some of these oil stocks. They, they look very attractive. Should people be buying? Yeah, I mean, you bring up these MLPs, the pipeline companies, and what's interesting is even at its high level uh, for in mid-June, we really still like the valuation. We like the yield spread. You were still getting about a 6% yield even after a huge run-up in price. Now, it's given some of those gains back. They're still up on the year, substantially mm -hmm. so, in a, in a year that's been very difficult, as you know. However, I think they've gotten very attractively priced. And they're now starting to come out, release their quarterly earnings. And I think they're all going to have great quarters and you're going to see dividends go higher. So UMI is what we use to get the space. But there's other great companies, EPD, enterprise products that grow the dividend and they're pipelines, right. not producers. Uh, I got 30 seconds. I'm going to squeeze it in, though, because uh, your Dividend Cafe podcast titled Inflation versus Recession versus Investing Common Sense. Just a snapshot. Uh, because it feels like investors are juggling all of these things, not really understanding the individual consequences of any of them. What does it all mean? Yeah, I think people have got to think through narratives. People say, well, oh, a recession could come and that'll be good for technology or uh, interest rates go higher and that's going to be good for financials. These things are not playing out according to textbook. People are not able to get simplistic solutions right now. Find a portfolio that's defensive and look for your offense and your risk where you have a longer timeline. That's the 30-second version of a 15-minute podcast. I tell you what, that was a hell of a 30-second version because uh, it, it made a lot of sense. And you're right, the Finergy chain was supposed to be everything this year. Energy held up its part. Finergy, not so much. Financials, not so much. David, thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it. Thanks, Charles. You know,